How's it going, guys? Hey. And gals. We're kind of kicking off tonight. We'll let a, a lot of people join in and before we really get into hardcore facts about crappie. But uh, let's talk about your weather. I know it's cold everywhere. Josh, you can kick uh, it off. Tell us about your weather over there and where you at. Yeah, it's uh, I'm in, here in northeast Oklahoma, and um, it's cold. Um, I'm pretty close to Tulsa right now, and we're we're talking 18, 16 or 18 degrees um, farther up in the northeast. I mean, it's been below zero <clears throat> a couple mornings, so mm. crazy, crazy weather. Not normal. Yeah. Absolutely. Same, same here for sure. It has been... Uh, unreal really i mean it, it you go outside to do a little chores and you're about sprinting back inside because it's so cold <laughs> it, it's brutal now i did get in some duck hunting and got in a good goose hunt uh with all this crazy weather and in some good snowfall so uh we actually got man i don't know what they said exactly we got i'd say like two inches two to three inches a a good layer of snow to cover the roads and cancel school for a couple of days so we're in just some junky weather but uh no yeah. Everything is pretty locked up too, fishing wise. Everything, I don't know where you could go put a boat in and fish around here besides maybe the big part of the lake, but that's about it. You know, I, I, we're lucky enough we've got open water as far as that goes. You'd be kind of sketchy actually getting to the lake. We've had a lot of ice on the roads, and so it's kind of shut down travel to make it really uh, treacherous in some areas. And probably tonight, I think we're going to be down at a low of 11 here, which is extremely cold for central Mississippi for sure. Uh, I'm going to kick off tonight. Special thanks to Bobby Garland Bates for putting on today's bite every week for us. We love doing this show. You know, it's growing with the help of you guys. I see tons of 25 k crop connection coming through. Thank you, guys. Keep killing it. And I'm going to let this guy in the center do an introduction, and then I'm going to follow up even with Mr. Josh. But Josh Johnson, go ahead and throw it out there, bro. Yeah, Josh Johnston. um I was a uh, I was a fisheries biologist for uh, the Department of Wildlife in Oklahoma for very close to 20 years. Um, left there last November. Um, still doing some fishery stuff. I still spend a lot of time on the lake, um, I, and and I keep my you know it's always something that you're interested in. And um, I don't think that I, you know, I'm not out sampling fish per se anymore, but um, I'm still very. Uh, very in tune with what's going on in Northeast Oklahoma. And, and I like this opportunity. I've been on your podcast twice, loved it both times, had a great time. Um, still get calls from people all over the nation. I got a call from a guy in Louisiana last week talking about crappie he heard one of the old uh, crappie connection podcasts. So um, yeah, I love what you guys do. And I'm glad, uh, glad you had me back. Man, definitely so. And like you just said, I think it was back at a OKC show that, you know, I met you there and you come on the podcast and uh, the title of that podcast was Hardcore Crappie Facts. And dude, like you said, I think it's been viewed over 60 something thousand times right now, just on YouTube, not not even count Spotify or the other platforms. So it's definitely been a hit. Uh, I know everybody has had tons of comments through the years about it, different questions. And I thought about it today and I was like, you know, it's not going to be a lot of fishing reports out there. It's not going to be a lot of today's bike necessarily reports, but we're going to try to gain some today's bike knowledge tonight and some actually good hardcore crappie facts. And I, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on here. I know it's going to be a great show. I'm going to try to keep up with the comments tonight. So, but I'm expecting a lot of them guys. If you've got a really good crappie fishing question, no matter how minor it is, we're going to get you some facts straight from a crappie uh, fish biologist. And believe me, it's going to be a great show. Hopefully uh, you'll learn a lot. So make sure you've got any kind of questions. Throw them out there. I'll try to catch them. Dustin kind of even helped me catch up with them. Yeah, I'll definitely try. I'm, I'm still having a problem reading the comments. So you guys are going to have to take it easy on Brad tonight. And if you have, <laughs> if you have, if you have something for me, let him know so he can tell me because I'm, I'm struggling for some reason to get my, comment section to pop up but i already uh, see a couple popping up here as i speak on the busiest night that we're gonna have i can't get my comments Imagine i know that. i know can't, can't get no help here man i don't, I don't know <laughs> what's up with that but you know and i see one right here and it's a basic question but it's a really good one but what's a typical crappie lifespan josh oh this is 
I think we've talked about it before and it floors everybody, but if you want to go by the average crop, it's four years. I mean, the average crop is going to live four years. I have, uh, I've seen them in a lot of reservoirs. They make it, you know, you get them up to five, six and seven and in like a stunted population where there was just some real wacky things going on. Um, I remember aging two fish in one population that were 11 and 12. That's just mm. not typical. Though. Totally. So your typical lifespan of a crappie is at least in the Southern United States. This does not apply if you're in Minnesota catching them through the ice. They just grow, live and do everything slower. But down here in the South, four years, um, that's just as normal as it gets. You know, we talk about even growth rates and we have in the past with other different uh, podcasts we've done together, but how long typically, and I know this depends on the lake and the nutritions and the shad and everything else, but if you just had to say a general rule, a 10 inch crappie, how old would you expect that fish to be in a, in a general setting? Yeah. Like in, in Oklahoma where we're at in about the same, if I was managing fish uh, where you're at, Brad, I would be, I want to see a, a, a crappie at 10 inches at that year and a half, like their second, uh, their second summer by their second summer. Yeah. So they're a year and a half, just barely a year and a half. Um, your really fast growers, your females that are growing fast, they'll get to that 10 inch mark by spring of that year, but it typically takes them a little bit longer. And that's why, um, this is off base, but that's why you see a lot of length limits out there that start at 10 inches. The only reason for that is that it's a population that maybe doesn't spawn as regularly, or it's an up and down system like Grand Lake. They can pull the water out, they can put it up. Uh, and you might have a bad spawn on their episodic spawners anyway. So you're going to have a boom year and then you're going to have a bust year. And to, yep. to get around that, a lot of times uh, when you're in a situation like that, we, we do a 10 inch minimum length limit. The reason is because we're pretty sure, you know, 80, 90% of those fish, even in a fast growing population are not going to be able to be harvested before they get that chance to spawn, which in the South is going to be at that, you know, that first year on males and a lot of times the first year on females in a good growing population. So, so crappie can spawn in their first year. Yeah. A lot of the, the, almost every male, I would say this far South in latitudes, especially in Brad's world, it's very close to all the males will be sexually mature in the first year. It's going to be, there's going to be some percentage of females and it depends on a lot of different things, but uh, even some of the females. Yeah. Gotcha. That's you know, awesome. I, I, I see another question pop up uh, up on here right now, but um, magnolia crappie and a black nose crappie. What's the difference between the two right there? Well, I guess you'd have to ask me or tell me that what the difference is in the two because I've heard that that term is just interchangeable with a yeah. crappie that has that black line down their nose. Yeah, and um, basically, I think. A lot of people still out there think it's a different species or it's a hybrid between a black and a white crappie. It's not. It's a, uh, it's a, morph uh, a morphometrical, morphological um, thing that, that, that they carry. So I, I know you guys have been trout fishing before in the winter in some of these trout ponds they put trout in. And you'll see every now and then there's a golden trout swimming around. Well, that's not like a California golden trout. It's just a rainbow trout. And one in 10,000 of them just have this gene. One in 10,000 rainbow trout have this gene to express this golden color. When you're in a hatchery situation, you take a bunch of those, and you spawn them together so you get better chances of it because they're cool. Um, that black nose uh, or magnolia crappie is the same deal. It's just a morph morphological thing that a certain percentage of the population has. And if you think you're seeing more of these days than you used to, you probably are. And that's because when people catch something odd like that, it's kind of like white deer. We see white deer, we probably don't shoot them. Uh, in nature, they would have gotten killed, right? But now we've killed most of their predators. We're their only predators. You see more and more white deer because none of us hunters want to kill a white deer. It's pretty cool. So same type deal. Fair enough. So do you know the, um, can they, so they can reproduce the black nose crappie can reproduce. They're, they're yeah, fine. Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. Sweet. I got a question here and it's very long. So I'm kind of cut it down from Chris or a uh, super model there, but um, he's asking, 
like you've got some lakes that are in the same general vicinity and one just seems to produce bigger crappie than the other. Soil quality and everything should be about the same, but what would be some of the differences to make one okay. lake superior over the other as far as big fish size? Well, there's a whole bunch. There's a lot of variables, but real easy ones to look at are the supply of food that they have. So uh, Dustin's on Grand Lake. And he's got all the crop, all the threadfin shad in the world. I mean, and then if threadfin shad went south, they got gizzard shad. And then if that went south, he's yeah. got bluegill. And he's got, yeah. you know, crustaceans and all these things. So these fish have a buffet all the time. <clears throat> it's not like that across the United States. I mean, there's plenty of places out there that crappie are eating insects for a large portion of the year. And then they're chasing around like, um, you know, some sort of creek dart, a darter or something that you find in a creek. And they're they're doing that our crappie in the south most of us are fishing in reservoirs with threadfin shad and when you have threadfin shad you generally have a bunch of them unless you're in a situation where you got one of those other variables which is like low primary productivity um that's going to give no help to having large populations of bait fish and then it's going to hurt growth other things it can be as simple as like this lake is muddier, this lake is clearer, this lake has spring influence, so um, it never gets as warm. This lake gets warmer and stays warmer and is more protected from uh, sharp changes in temperature just based on the muddy water because the turbid water doesn't let, uh, it, it, it attracts the sunlight. All those particles attract the sunlight. They get warmer faster, they stay warmer. Um, there's just so many variables, guys, but the easiest one to look at I mean, you don't want to go down the line of pH. Sometimes you just find out you're managing these water bodies and you're just like, this place sucks. And we don't really know why. It just <laughs> doesn't do it. Yeah. And it probably something to do with a mixture of pH and, um, you know, chlorophyll A, which is some term that you, I mean, something that's there to help that primary productivity. But at the end of the day, if you've got a bunch of bait um, and you're in a situation that stays pretty stable, uh temperature wise then they should be about the same i've got a question about crappie spawning how many times a year do crappie actually spawn <laughs> i've heard that and i know i've asked you that question before but it's one of these things that you know please tell me they you've spawn heard through the years people say well i see crappie spawning in the fall but kind of explain the crappie spawn for folks yeah so here, here's the easy thing there. So we'll just start by talking about a crappie compared to a, uh, a paddlefish or a gar or something like that. So there's K select and there's R selected species. One of those species chooses to be bad parents, spend very little time on parenting. So they make a lot of eggs. They're tiny eggs. They shoot them out. They start doing it at a very young age and they do it their whole lifetime every year. And they've got a gen their potential to pass on their genetics is pretty good because they've thrown out a lot of eggs. So crappies in that group, they they, you know, the average crop is going to have 50, 60,000 eggs. Um, where your average largemouth bass, who's still the case selected species, but we're talking like five to eight thousand. And then a paddlefish is even, le I mean, it's a lot because of it's a big fish, but it may go three years before it spawns. It's going to wait for the perfect time. Crappie don't hang around. Babies are born. It's like yeah. Hopefully a few of you guys make it. Um, so that being said, they're also centrarchids, sunfish family, bass, crappie, bluegill, that sort of thing. And centrarchids are very, very well known for having a delaying their spawn. So spawning a little bit, keeping some eggs and spawning a little bit more and then spawning a little bit more. And then once you get into those more case selected smaller fish like bluegill and crappie, you have to think there's a lot of predators out there in the lake eating these fish. So they have to spawn as much as possible. If conditions stay good or resources are good or the population of that species is low, um, they will spawn multiple times. Now, will they spawn in the fall? We've talked about this before where people call it the super spawn. And it's like when the thing lines up the same as it is very normal for let's start stop there. It's very normal for a crappie to spawn. When water temperature hits 62 and a half degrees in photo periods right in oklahoma let's say that's april 7th 
And it's very, very normal for that crappie to spawn again in June. And it would be not outside of the norm for that crappie to spawn again towards the end of June or in May and then in June. If conditions all stay good and all of those things were met that we talked about before, they've got plenty of resources, especially in a low population situation, they're going to try to fill the bunkers. But the problem with the super spawn is once you get all the way over to fall, the whole reason that the spawn happens based on photo period and this temperatures and all of this is because when those fish, those crappie are born, they have about a month where they're eating phytoplankton and then they move on to zooplankton, just a bigger plankton, stuff you'd see under your microscope. But at about four to six weeks, they hit what you call piscivory, and that means they're eating fish now. Well, what is any crappie going to eat? What are the babies going to eat if they're born on October the 15th? Mm -hmm. First off, you don't have a lot of phytoplankton and there's these blooms aren't happening. It's not spring. So you're actually slowing down coming towards the end of the year. All of your bait fish are too big. When they switch over to piscivory, there's nothing they can eat. So long story short, if a crappie does spawn in the fall because it gets mixed up or whatever, one, it's not going to work. And two, those, those fish are going to die. And because of that, evolutionarily, that's just never going to take off. Like the ones that could pass on that gene didn't pass it on because there's nothing for their babies to eat. So it's got to stop somewhere. And uh, so, yes, do they spawn multiple times? Absolutely. They certainly can. Some crappie might spawn once, some might spawn four times. But the fall thing, it just doesn't work out. It just doesn't work with the nature of the whole situation. It makes sense. What about, you know, and I see this question or two, uh, but how far will crappie move in the springtime? Have you got any kind of knowledge, any kind of reports or any kind of data that you've got or I've seen through the years as far as crappie movement, how far they can move and will move? Yeah, so it, what it, they do move, they move more probably in uh, June and July than any other time of the year. Um, but the thing about them is, is they're kind of like people in most of the centrarchids, like the bass, the crappie, the bluegill are the same. You'll, you have these home bodies and then you have the, and that's the main part of them that don't move very much at all. Well, I would say, okay, so studies like this have, have looked and said, Hey, we got this giant situation, this giant lake, let's tag 5,000 of them and watch them. The, the farthest one's home range went like basically how big of an area did it ever move in, in a two year period? was 85 hectares. I don't remember how to do the math on that, but that's more than acres. That's a lot. Like this thing was moving a lot for a little fish. The average though was 15, um, which is, if you take the course of two years, that's not that much. I mean, that might be Blue Creek Cove and Uliga, you know? I mean, that it's not, it's just not. And then you've got the least is like 0.1 hectare. I mean, there's fish that, can winter oh, off the end of this point? Yeah, they're wintering and summering off the end of this point and spawning up on it. And they just that's crazy. Like, that's everything they need is right there. They don't need to they don't need to move around that much. So they're not that's migratory healthy. species. Real healthy lake. I got a real yeah. hot topic here as far as questions goes. It said, is it beneficial to keep the big old fish or should more big fish be kept? Oh, 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 did you really just ask that one, Brad? Oh, yeah, of course. So, <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this before. Here's what I say, and I'm kind of like the, the, I guess the... Bear of bad it's news. Like the, it's the voice you don't want to hear. Yeah. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters, and this is why crappie live about four years, your average crappie. Those big ones, they it's not like they got a lot of life left in them. If it's after the spawn, they're probably not going to spawn again. They did their best spawning at two and three years old. Um, they're obviously faster growing fish. They're, you know, because a lot of these fish are going to hit nine or 10 inches and that's the end of their lifespan in the same population where you've got these others. So all the food was there, but there, there's just genetics around it. There's a bunch of little things. So yeah, you want them to pass their genes on, but like we've talked about before, those fish have, at that size, you catch an 18 inch crappie, it's had a lot of time to pass its genes on. And it's probably not going to get the opportunity to do it again. And if it does, they're at towards that end of their life where they're just not like they're, they're just not as vital um, 
you know, they might have more eggs. They might do things like that. But you just get the best spawns out of those middle-aged fish generally. Um, you know, if you're looking at largemouth bass, it's like three, four, five-year-olds. Those those are really good spawners, even though they might have a smaller amount of eggs. The problem is, is with a bass, you think think that through and you're like, but they have 10 years. We don't know. We might be taking out the greatest on the population. Crappie, it's so cyclic. There's so many of them. And uh, by the time you notice that that's a giant trophy, it's probably at the end of its lifespan. So you just should do what you want to do, you know? Very What's your take and what have you kind of seen the last couple of years as far as live scoping? Do you see the different agencies kind of adjusting as far as limits and regulations when it comes to forward facing sonar in the near future? What would be your opinion on that hot, hot topic? Yeah. So, I mean, everybody in the state of Oklahoma fought about it and fought about it. And I was on the side of, Hey man, show me where it's causing a problem. Um, because I, I just don't think we need undue regular. We don't need regulations on something that, um, that we're just guessing about like, well, this seems bad. Well, we talked about this before. Our limit in the state of Oklahoma is 37 crappie. If you think that that was something scientific, you're crazy. I mean, nobody knew what to make the limit of crappie was. So it's like, well, Texas has 50, Kansas does 25. So we're in between. Why don't we just meet in the middle? 37. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. And your typical angler, when you start, when you start looking at how many people keep 37 crappie, it's like very slim. Even since we've gotten live scope, you'll talk to people that are like, everybody's getting a limit now. Well, the dudes that can catch a limit, and if you're not a guide, the dude that can catch a limit cleans 37 crappie one time. Yeah. And then he cleans 10 or 12 or 15. I know I'm that dude. I'm I, I, there's no reason I need to be cleaning yeah. 37 crappie. Exactly. Uh, and so you this this live scope thing is so crazy. And they did a huge study in Arkansas and it was pretty cool because they're like, yeah, we found all the stuff you want to see as these people that hate live scope. We found it. These people that are using live scope catch more fish. They catch those fish faster. But guess what? The weird part is they show up to the boat ramp with about the exact same. Like when you split it down the middle, if we judged everybody and, and did a krill survey, it was like they're taking home about the same amount of fish. Nobody, either group is hurting it any worse. The the issues we've talked about in the past, and it is, it's a concern, especially on these small lakes, but it takes care of itself. The concern is hydrating. Um, if you're out there and you're fishing like you used to, you're going to, if they're keepers, you're going to put them in the box. If you have a live scope and you're good at it, now you're all of a sudden going to shoot for those bigger fish. Like, I'm not going to take home a 10 inch crappie or a nine inch crappie. I'm going to catch 12 inches or above. Yeah. Yeah. The issue with that is you get to these small little tiny lakes and every one of these tiny muddy lakes is known for having a big crappie. And that's a whole biological discussion we could get into. But <laughs> the point is, is people are so worried. Well, they found out that this tiny little 50 acre lake in Southern Oklahoma has got these big fish. No, seven people life scope showed up. They all caught their three pounder. They're all on somebody's wall now and they're gone. The great thing about crappie is, that lake still has that potential. You didn't get rid of any potential. Number two, they grow incredibly fast and they were already towards the end of their lifespan. So you took some trophies out. Well, what you honestly did is the next 10 people that go, they're like, well, crap, they caught them all. Well, that lake's off the radar now. And by the next time you go back, it's going to be, wow, nobody was paying attention and these things are back. So um, <laughs> it's a it's a weird situation. In a big lake, I, just, I don't know, guys. I've it, given all the secrets. Huh? All the secrets of the lakes, because I always put in the back of my head, like, uh, keep tabs on the ones that are catching fish, and they keep saying, like, oh, they've rent that lake, because in another four or five years, that lake's going to be lights out, because people will eventually give up on it, and then it, yeah. like you said, it, it didn't stop what happened, because it already happened once, it's going to happen again. Yeah, and it's probably more with crappie, it's probably honestly more like one or two years, unless yeah. they just went and just, compl like, yeah started yeah, keeping yeah. eight and nine inches uh, all of those yeah. that they caught but that's just going to give room those those ones that are left then are just going to grow at even a faster rate so that's it's true. uh i do be change if there's ever studies that show oh my gosh we're we're down in crappie and it's and it's realistic like this has happened you're going to run out of crappie at your lake or think you ran out of crappie because crappie spawns 
are so sporadic and so yep. episodic. So Grand Lake, 2005, we had senators, state representatives, like screaming, saying, we're going to stock the crappie in a 47,000 acre lake. That's how bad it was because it was two or three bad spawns in a row. I've heard that. You didn't do anything. And they went gangbusters by 2007, like a year later. Wow, where'd all the crappie come from? Now they were eight, nine inches, but the following year, and it's been like that ever since, but we're going to hit that again. And every lake's going to, with crappie, yeah. is going to have those issues. That was yeah. my next point or next question would be the biggest factor in your mind would be a bad spawn or, or over harvesting. Oh, a bad spawn. It's not even close for, for, uh, yeah. yeah I mean, because it, it, crop spawn, you're talking stuff. thousands and thousands and thousands of fish. And then I would imagine that the pressure from fishermen is such a small number compared to that. Oh yeah. It's yeah. so small. And it's, uh, you, you get into these big lakes and it's insane. I mean, um, yeah, the way I always look at it is that one, the one fish, I mean, uh, going off of you being biologist, how many eggs does one crappie lay? I mean, isn't it around 60,000 eggs or am I off? Yeah. 60,000 is like an average. Yeah. Okay. So 60,000, say the average crappies, one crappie in that lake, if he lays all six or she lays all 60,000 eggs and say 50% hatch. So 30,000. Uh, crappie hatch out of that 50% hatch rate, which probably don't happen, but say it does one crappie. I bet you 30,000 crappie is pushing it that comes out of Grand Lake in a year from fishermen. That's one crappie compared to the thousands lined up down that thing. So that's where I always think like this one fish has covered everybody's for the whole year, everybody's crappie they've kept. So it's hard yeah, just, for me to get on the, that train of worrying about it. Yeah, just think of it this way too. You were on Grand Lake. Two, I, I don't remember if it was two or three years. It might be three years ago now where it was like you could 100% tell there was a slower year class in the above. Like, man, I don't know where are all the big fish. And it was kind of slow below. But that 10 inch year class was oh my. It, they, like they were everywhere. I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands yeah. of these. And that was sure. that had nothing. To, that was after LifeScope came out. Everybody was worried. And all it took was. GRDA couldn't get the water out soon enough. It kept coming down and we had water up in the bushes throughout the spawn. And yeah. I mean, it's like repopulated. The whole that entire year class was gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. What is sure. a mature crappie's biggest predator? Oh, hoo, hoo. come on. Blue cat. <sighs> yeah. I mean, they get eaten by a lot of things, but blue cat, flathead, um, birds, um, oh yeah, I bet birds is a big one. I mean, you get into some of our lakes, Brad. I don't know. I'm sure you have some of them, but you get into some of our lakes. They're tied to big rivers here. You know, you got Grand River and you got Arkansas River. There's pretty big groups of cormorants that roll in. Yeah, thousand. Yeah, I think ninety percent of the time they're eating threadfinch or they're eating gizzard shad probably, but they don't. They're not species specific. They just they find oh, a school yeah. of fish and they're diving into them. If that's a school of crappie, they're eating them. So, and you'll catch a lot of crappie with holes in them from like the beaks and stuff. Yeah. They kind of tore up from getting hit by those. But you got to think yeah. the crappie are chasing the shad they're chasing. So, like you said, they probably dive down and whack them things all the time, I imagine. Yeah, they're getting eaten by everything. Largemouth bass eats, eat crappie. In yeah. some lakes, hey, crappie eat crappie. Yeah, crappie eat crappie. I've, I've pulled a lot of crappie out of crappie just because they'll have the little hatch and you they'll be in a big school and it ain't nothing for a crappie to just whack a, whack a little crappie. So, yeah. What would you think a crappie would be feeding on when they're nose down? And we're seeing it more and more with live sonar, forward face, forward face and sonar and such. But I've noticed these crappie, and the question here from Reggie Hillman is actually, when you see these crappie nosing down, traveling in the mud, what would you think they would be feeding on at that time? Uh, some sort of crustacean or amphipod or, uh, you know, little things. Some people have fairy shrimp across the... In, in places in the United States, there's time, time frames, especially, I feel like our threadfin shad lakes, it's like, it's really hard for us to key in on something else because they're eating those most of the time, right? But they're still a crappie and there's times of the year where in certain parts of the country, I mean, their winter diet is 90% like amphipods and crustaceans of sorts, little yeah. things that live in the mud and, you know, dragonfly all over it or something sounds really crazy and i'm sure they don't feed for them often but i've cleaned a crappie that had a mud puppy in it 
and, yeah. and I figured that it, it either pulled it off like a stump or, or something around the bottom, I'd imagine. It, and I have a picture of it. It is a little mud puppy with the uh, feet and all <laughs> out of that thing. So I thought, man, maybe they do feed on the bottom like that. <laughs> Hey, they're, they're opportunistic like any sport fish, yeah. and they got a big mouth. Anything that'll fit in their mouth, they'll eat. Um, like and, I mean, if, if you fall a lake and Kerr, Kerr Reservoir here in Oklahoma have are known for these gigantic um, mayfly hatches during oh, yeah. the summer. It's yeah. not every summer that it's gigantic, but every third or fifth summer, it'll be like you can't get out of the truck at the boat ramp because yeah. they're in your mouth, and they're just covering the trees. And during crazy. that time frame, during that time frame, you're crazy if you don't just switch to like a brown tube jig or something because those fish they're so opportunistic that they're just they're just they're not going to chase shad. These things are just hatching all around them. They're just eating mayflies because it's it's there and it's easy. I got a couple questions. Like I said, I'm trying to keep up with the questions, guys. Keep them coming. We're going to try to get that's to why, them. Uh, that's why the Bobby Garland had actually just came out with a mayfly bait exactly like actually built just for a mayfly just like you're talking you're crazy if you don't use it during the mayfly hatch but this is actually the bug of a mayfly built just like one but you can see that there yeah and and that yeah. is just for that reason mayfly hatch. and they will absolutely murder the crappie that time of year for sure do crappie live longer or shorter lives in smaller lakes rather than bigger bodies of water have you noticed any kind of thing that through the years that a fish might live longer in a small body of water compared to a larger, or I guess that's kind of how the question's asking. I think the key here is uh, like how healthy are they? So how healthy of a population? So we've gone all over the place saying, what's the predator and what's this and what's that? And I haven't even said yet, like, should we change regulations? I haven't even said yet that the best way to ruin your crappie population you might not be able to do it on a lake like Grand because there's so many variables and other things eating them. But you get into a smaller lake, and if you if humans start deciding, I'm going to throw back crappie because we want a trophy situation, it's ruined. Like, you need a high level of harvest, typically more than we're willing to do. Um, yeah. That being said, those that place where I aged those, that 11 and 12-year-old, the oldest crappie I've ever seen, I've seen others at 10 years old and they've always existed in a stunted population. So a population wow. that those crappie stunted, uh, it just means, Hey, there's too many of them. The resources aren't around and they just don't grow past a certain, but they get to about six to eight inches. That 12 year old crappie was seven inches. Long. What? Wow. And the, uh, Did they have big eyeballs? <laughs> no, I mean, it just looked like a seven inch cry. You, you couldn't even tell that it wasn't, healthy really it wasn't there was nothing weird about it i mean that's the weird part you don't see them and you go oh something's wrong here they so i think for whatever reason if they're really healthy and they're getting that fast growth rate they're spawning when they need to spawn and basically lifespan on fish is generally just built around so they've done these studies with fish where you can if you're needing lab studies you need to produce fish fast you can turn the heat up in a, an aquarium and change the amount of light they get during the day, turn the light off sooner or later and make them spawn. And then you can wow. very quickly cool that water down and you can give them less light, make it dark most of the time, give them like a week and turn that light back on and get it warmed back up and they'll just do it all again. They'll just go right through it again. The That's crazy part about that is people started doing that like, oh, we can produce a lot and we'll have all these fish. Well, all you did was just you just stuck this little fish as lifespan from two years into like two months. They can mm -hmm. spawn this many times and then they die. Um, they just, it, so it's, it's based on this. I think if fish are healthy, crappie are healthy, they're growing fast. Resources are available. They just have a normal life. They grow fast in the South. Anyway, they grow fast. They spawn fast. They overall, they live fast. So it's that four or five years they're going to perish. And because of what I've seen um, with, with those older fish, those fish that grow really old being stunted, I would guess that this is not a direct answer to your question, but it is an answer. The chances of stunning a stunted crappie population in a smaller reservoir, very high compared to a large reservoir. So on average, I would say, I'm going way out on a limb here, but uh, 
smaller lakes could would, could have older crappie. That does not. I just said the opposite of what somebody's asking though. Where, you know, they're assuming hey, an old crappie's big. Well, a lot of times an old crappie is not. So, gotcha. So when you say the four to five years they perish, do they like when you're saying that? Do they actually just die of like old age? Like they'll just float to the top and be dead? Or yeah, I talking? mean, I mean, yeah, they die. Most of them catches them or. Yeah, most most of them don't float to the top because you got things like, like it takes a while to float to the top and something eats on them or something like that. And it's not like a fish kill. It's just just like us. They just get old and die. They get stressed out from the summer or whatever. But uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, they just they just die. And four years is the average uh, average lifespan. That's certainly not. I mean, they can they can live longer or live shorter, but that's mm-hmm. that's given the chance to. That's that's like not counting. That's not an average lifespan with fishermen involved. That's not mm-hmm. taking in fishing mortality and all that. That's just environmental, like what happens. So, uh, all right, Josh, I got a couple more for you, real quick, guys. I, we've got 123 likes between Facebook and uh, YouTube right now. So everybody watching is 300 people plus watching. Go ahead and hit that button, regardless if it's the thumbs up or like button. Show us some love. Show Josh some love real quick and light up that scoreboard for us. And I've got a really unique question, Stephen Sullivan, and I've been holding on to it for a second, so I didn't want to pass it up. But why do some lakes like Florida really produce a lot of black crappie and very few white crappie? Uh, why would some lakes just naturally produce one over the other? Yeah, it's a real good question. Um, <clears throat> black crappie do a lot better in clear water, um, just a lot better. And you can prove that basically you can see that by uh by going to a lake that's got a got a clear arm and a in a in a muddy arm and then fishing the crappie spawn and it's just kind of crazy you're at fort gibson lake you go to the clear end of the lake fishing the spawn those those black crappie will spawn a little bit of different timing too but it's like you catch all black crappie over there and then you go just right over here to this arm i mean you just cross the lake and uh, it's almost all white crappie. And so there's just uh, one of them won out at some point or one of them never made it to those places. Um, they're generally clear wa- bodies of water. We've got we've got lots of places that have both species in the state of Oklahoma. Um, sure. But there's some places out in the southwest that I remember, especially like you get into the Wichita mountains on those refuge lakes and they're clear. You might, they they might be tannic. Like you're saying, Oh, my lake in Florida is not clear. Um, because it's Brown looking, but you can throw a white spinner bait and you see it 60 feet, 60 yards from here because it's that tannic acid from the oaks and the plants breaking down. It's really clear water. It's not mud. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, that's a, it's a good question because we had those lakes out there, but the common thing was they are clear lakes why white crappie didn't end up in that situation or do well that's a weird question a good question i i almost think like certain lakes were just stocked with black crappie at the beginning and maybe white wasn't thrown in it but i wasn't sure that's that was my theory i didn't i didn't know that yeah if 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 a lake was stocked with crappie and they're not there natively then that's a that could be a big thing a big reason for that and that might be the reason for the stuff in the Wichita mountains, those lakes were probably all stocked. And here's the deal. I mean, black crappie are going to overpopulate just like white crappie, just not as at as high of a rate. So you've always heard that if you're going to stock your pond with crappie, stocking your pond with crappie is the dumbest thing you could ever do. But if you're going to do it, um, (laughs) choose black black crappie. (laughs) I've heard that. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. Unless you fish that pond a lot. (laughs) Yes. What's the deepest crappie will spawn? Oh man, I, so let's just talk in generalities. Um, I think we've talked about this before, and it kind of mm-hmm. amazed me. Or I've talked about it with somebody, but they did a study in uh, Table Rock Lake in Arkansas, and it's clear, it's real clear. But those crappies' average depth of spawning were somewhere between 14 and 16 feet. That's average. It was your normal. So that means there were some of them spawning on like dock pilings in 21 feet, and there were some of them spawning up in eight feet. Uh, you get really muddy water, and that's there's two reasons I like to fish the crappie spawn in some turbid water. Uh, one of those reasons is because it's it heats up faster, and I can get after it faster. I don't have to wait the yeah. extra weeks or whatever. 
the second thing is that that's going to be that if you're that dude that wants to like carry a 10 foot <clears throat> jigging pole and like walk down the bank and be able to fish in the bushes and catch these giants just right out there it's going to happen at a turbid lake because they're going to spawn shallower um for the most part you start getting in those clear lakes and there's just not a lot of crappie spawning up on the rocks i mean if you think about it they're passing on their genes of what of their behaviors their babies are going to have a lot of the same behaviors they did well we already talked about birds and everything else if you're in this pristine clean place like table rock lake and you decide to okay. spawn at one foot deep you're something's going to get you yeah um so but it, but it makes it harder on us fishermen just for that same reason to go to like you know, Table Rock's not the lake I'm going to choose for the crappie spawn because I don't want I don't want to be catching. You know, it's not that fun to be fishing the spawn in 14 or 20 feet of water. Like I can do that anytime. Of year. We so. like that slip cork on the bank, real shallow stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm keep on going down here. There's a lot of questions. Like I said, as I'm, I'm reading down here, I'm gonna catch up. But I'll come on down here. I'll... Sorry, you had to roll, Brad. I can't get my dang thing to work. I ain't got no help tonight. You know, you it's going to be really interesting, Josh. And I think yeah. you would be, find this fascinating in the future as well. Lake Washington, which is a, a lake here in Mississippi, is probably nationally known for holding big crappie through the years. And uh, it even was stated back this year from our biologists here that in 2020 they had a bad spawn. And actually, I think probably in 2019 it had bad spawn as well. And our population got really low. And the uh, Mississippi Department of Wildlife Fishery guys, they went in and actually stocked it this past fall. First time they've ever stocked really uh, a body of water that big, to my knowledge, and uh, from them. But and it's primarily, I'm gonna say, 95 percent always been uh, white crappie. Yeah. Now this year, because of the hatchery, they actually stocked it with black crappie. I think it'd be really interesting to come back and see if those black crappie can adapt in that situation where primarily white crappie have, donate, have dominated through the years. Mm -hmm. Do you think something like that, do you think they might've done that intentionally just to see if the stocking would work or is it just in your opinion, it probably just because of the hatchery deal? Well, I, I think probably two things. One, I think if you've got hatcheries, spawning crappie that they're, they're probably spawning black crappie. I mean, that's just the, if you're going to stock a small reservoir or something, it's just a way to do it. Um, I've never been a part of that growing crappie purposely. Um, here's what I honestly think, and this isn't a knock on any of those biologists because they may be studying something that's great, but I would say my, my best guess for what went on is it's a, it's kind of a play of showmanship, right? Um, there's just there just was unless it was like there's just no crappie left kind of like the story i was telling earlier about threadfin shad when we didn't have any at grand lake we took 4500 or 5000 over from a smaller lake put them in honey creek of grand lake and within a year you, you could walk across the water on a 47000 acre lake on yeah. threadfin shad anywhere crappie are the same way it's just going to take one good spawn um it's hard for me to believe that that, ha that stocking had any effect on the population. Now, that being said, I hope some of them made it because yeah, it'll be cool to have some black crappie and some white crappie. Um, I don't know if they did it intentionally just to have, uh, I mean, it could be something that they're wanting to watch. Hey, Lake yeah. Washington, we dropped these crappie spawns. Seems like two out of every five years. What if we put black crappie in there and they're, they just, they, you know, they like to spawn a little bit cooler temperature and uh, maybe they miss the big flood. Yeah, or the, now, the it is a small lake, though. What is the size of the lake, Brad? Uh, about 4,000 acres, 3,500, okay, so 4,000 acres. It's a 3,500, 4,000 acre. And they were struggling. I noticed like on tournaments and fishing and live scope, like they were not finding mm -hmm. or seeing catching very many fish at mm -hmm. all for a long period of time. So that's where I thought maybe they we're hoping that this this would kind of help that yeah that might be right because yeah i thought it, i was thinking it was a large lake so four thousand yeah, acres four thousand acres if you get some survival you could change the game real fast dramatically yeah. yeah so do you think that that lake though is one spawn if they didn't put those fish in there is it one spawn away though from turning completely around 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, unless they have, unless they, unless they took some data and they found out like it's really bad. Yeah, they did. Because I'm telling you that 2005 and 2006 Grand Lake, that was really bad. But yeah, we could go set nets and still catch a few crappie. And if you can catch a crappie in a location in a net, oh, you're fine. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> and, and so, um. I don't know. Maybe they may have been concerned. Most times that people do stuff like that, uh, departments do stuff like that. It is incredibly easy to grow crappie. They may catch them out of a, in a pond. They may have them in a pond because the they're feeding them to bass to overwinter, or they may be coming through the pipes or something anyway. And it's like, look, the fishermen love this. It doesn't affect anything negatively. It's not costing us a lot of money. Let's go exactly. put them in. Fair enough. What's the like ratio it. between male and females from the egg population? Can you, uh, is there a difference between temperatures that would create more male crappie or females, or is it just going to be a 50 50 ratio pretty much? Well, I think overall, we just have to look at it at about a 50 50. There, there can be some weird things that happen. I know in, uh, I should know this answer, and I know I've looked into this stuff before, but like in reptiles, it's, it's, that's why whoever's going down this, this line of questioning, in reptiles, it's a hundred percent. Like if if mm -hmm. if your alligator eggs are in a hole that gets to a certain temperature, they're all female, you know. And if if they're really the ones on the bottom may be male, and these are female because this one's cooler or warmer. So there's some weird stuff in the animal world, especially when you get into reptiles, that happens. But over the course of things, the consideration you have to have in nature, like we wouldn't be here and still have crappie. Uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of years later, if we've been through some real cold times, you know how short their lifespan is. We've been through some real cold times. We've been some, through some real warm times that have lasted 10 years, 100 years, what, however many years. And if you had a population that, oh, well, it's warm this year. <laughs> it's all yep. over this degree. We're going to have all these females. Well, that's just not going to work out. So just look at it as there may be some differences and some issues just like on a small term but it doesn't make any difference in the real world it's we got to figure they hit the ground about 50 50. how do you age a crappie uh you age a crappie with the it's about the easiest fish to age um the best way to age a, a fish the most confident way especially these types of fish um bass crappie centrark is the scaled fish is most scaled fish is a uh, otolith and that is um like we have three it bones in our inner ear, the stirrup, the amble, and whatever the other one was. Crappie have an otolith. You've heard drum have uh, rocks in their head, right? Well, that's yeah. just, they just grow this giant calcified otolith. And that that thing grows with the fish. And it's kind of sitting in a, in a, in a hollow spot with some water or like some liquid. And it sets in there. And it grows as the fish grows. It's just a calcified structure. And the cool thing about it is the fish are growing slow in the winter. Um, they get fat and everything, but they don't make their lengthy growth time. Everything's slower. They slow down. They Their metabolism slower. So it puts that those daily calcium rings are stuck really close together. When you pull one of those otoliths out of a crappie, you'll have like relatively clear and then a thick white ring and then relatively clear and then a thick right, white ring. And uh, those thick white rings are every winter of that crappie's life. And so wow. go from crazy. the middle, which is called the kernel, and that's basically when it was born. And then that next ring will be out at a year. And then and they get really close together when they get up there old. Oh, like, it's really hard to age that 12-year-old crappie because you got to think, like, that thing wasn't growing anyway. It only made it to seven inches. So after that, those rings, I mean, you're Good looking in your detective. Uh, Dissecting, dissecting scope and those rings are close together. A good population, Grand Lake crappie, you catch a 14 incher up there and it's like, it's easy to see. That fish three and a half years old. Yeah. Is that. it true so that crappie will absorb their eggs if they don't lay them in the correct water temperature or if the water rises temperature too fast? Yeah, that, eventually they will reabsorb their eggs, but uh, I... I see people on Facebook all the time going, it's a weird year. Look, I cleaned a crop and it's got eggs in it. They're centrarch. Like I said, they've just, they, it's very hard to catch a female at 
any time of the year a female crappie and not find eggs in her. You yeah, know? and they, when they're spawning, do they lay all their eggs at once? They or they do it a couple times, right? No, I, they rarely. Almost any of those centrarchid species, bass, crappie, uh, sunfish, almost it's very rare for them to lay them all at once. Right. I so you might that. have one single fish may say, "Let's get them all rid of them all right now because it's perfect timing." And then you might have a, a fish that spawns right next to her, and she just lays a third of her eggs. Yeah. And she might not do another third tomorrow she might do another third next week and yeah i might, might hold on to some for a while um so yeah but eventually they can reabsorb them if that's uh necessary to get those resources back but a lot of times you'll just find you can find crappie in the fall that's why people think they're spawning in the fall because they've got a bunch of eggs they've just been a good year she's got a lot of resources and <laughs> at some point in that female crappie's life she's putting you know, quite a bit of her excess resources towards reproductive reproduction. This one kind of, we had this brought up, I guess, about a, um, three or four weeks ago. But the dot by the, the fish's rear end, is that a way to actually sex the crappie between a male and a female? Uh, repeat that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> In the springtime, you'll notice a male will have a black speck by its anal hole, and it, it just seems like every male would have one. Now, I the only time I seen this was in Mississippi. A guy had told me, a guide there, and then everybody started looking, and sure enough, and that water's so muddy that all the fish kind of come out white, if that makes sense. They don't get yeah, yeah, sunlight yeah. or, or, or uh, what turns them black as a male. And, you know, because at Grand, when we catch a male or female, you can tell right off the bat, especially oh, in yeah. spring. Uh, when they turn their colors it's very easy to tell but in, in mississippi or different muddy lakes it's really hard to tell besides there's this black dot and then when they sit in the lie well for a while they blacken up real dark which comes into another question after this but the black dot was just a telltale sign if it had that black dot it was a male you could wait in the lie well it was going to be black yeah, I'm waiting behind. man i learned something uh yeah, because I'm gonna have to check this out now, and maybe that's yeah. something that's known out there. But I did not, I didn't know but, that. But the only, the only, I didn't know it the only, the thing is though, you can't do it right now in the fall. That's what was cracking me up. Like in the spring, it was, it was sure enough. Every male was having a speck. It was like a black, uh, almost like a sharpie just touched it, touched a couple scales, and it was a black speck. And I can actually put, get a couple pictures for Brad to post next time, maybe or something. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, but on top yeah, of this, we had, a, we had a big discussion on one of these lives, and, and people had all mixed emotions about it. And, of course, everybody knows what they're talking about. But when a fish gets pulled out of the water and say it's not near as black, you know when spring's starting to come in and you can tell the fish are starting to feel it, but you pull a fish out and you can't quite tell, but you put it in the live well, is it the sunlight turning these fish black or is it what turns these male fish like just dark black and i guess as soon as they come out of the water it seems like they really change yeah so generally the the reason you're seeing those really white ones in that muddy water is they just don't have any access to the sun the sun's yeah. not penetrating so when you get in a clear situation people around here catch blue cats in muddy water and they say this is a different species white. mississippi yeah. white o yeah. only one you can eat you think yeah. that's the most ridiculous thing because they're just blue cats they're just in muddy water but yeah you pull them out of there you get them in the live well is a lot of times um cl it's cleaner water it's moving around and stuff like that they've got that light on them um yeah it's the same way yeah. look at trout stocked trout that yeah. came from a raceway where they're in that really clear water exactly. and the lights penetrate and they'll just be black looking um yeah a, a so, yeah, it's mainly light. That's mainly kind of what light. I thought. The, the light was changing them. Basically, describe a white crappie versus a, a, a black crappie to people. And also, I know when I was crappie fishing, I just got into it 20 plus years ago, whatever. You know, you catch a, a dark crappie in, in the springtime, and you say, well, that's <laughs> a black crappie. Man, and yeah, we run into the, the, so that whole thought process there for us, Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah I still have I still have arguments. I get arguments all the time. That, <laughs> oh yeah, I caught all these black crappie, and yes. they're all white crappie. The crazy part is a males. male white crappie will generally get darker than a male black crappie. Yeah, um, during the spring, and so here's the easiest way to do it, and it's right a real, real like 
hardcore biologist will say, or, or you meet somebody that's just a really into fish ID, they're going to say, no, 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 never follow that advice. But if it looks, this is 99% true. Um, if that fish looks like you took a paintbrush and splattered the side of it, or like a shotgun hit it, that's a black crappie. Yeah. The white crappie is always going to have some vertical bars. You want to go a little farther, a black crappie has, I'm probably going to get this backwards, but you can look yeah. it up on the internet if it's backwards. Their dorsal fin will have spines at the front of it, like the, the not the soft rays, but the ones that can poke you. In a black uh, crappie, you'll have five or six of those spines. In a white crappie, you'll have seven or eight of those spines. Um, but almost always, they'll have a vertical pattern. Yeah. The black crappie do not have a vertical pattern. There's a bunch of other things. People look at the way their nose comes to here and there, but when you start, you start doing this, like you're a biologist and you're having to do this on a, on a three inch fish, you don't, you're not going to be looking at any of the way their nose turn. It just doesn't work, but yeah, you get in real cold water too, real cold, muddy water. Um, yeah. and you get, you're pulling them all out and they all just look white. Almost always you can still see the difference in the patterns on the fish, but if you can't, then you just go to those fin spines. That's the next best way. Which I've, also noticed, best. I've noticed with black crappie, um, they're kind of the same way. If you pull them out of like muddy water and they're really pale and you're having a hard time tail, if you put them in the live well just for a little bit, that black crappie will start shining on it instead yeah. of bars, of course. But a black crappie will color up, not even in the spring, just even in the fall. They'll, they'll color back up when you pull them out of that muddy water. Typically on the male crappie, what temperature do they actually start turning black, turning darker colors, our general range? And why do they do something like that? What is your thought process of why do they actually turn darker in the spring? Spawn yeah, it, it's like uh, a lot of animals do that same thing. Yeah, it's bird. Birds are huge on it. It's just part yeah. of that part of that courtship deal. And I was going to uh, use a turkey, for example, those toms when they color up something crazy in the spring. Yeah, and the really crazy part is that like in our world the the women put on makeup and and we don't even you know we we look like garbage most of the time but in the animal world it's it's almost always the male that has to put on uh these shows so yeah i mean it's just a courtship thing and the temperature um i think that probably has a lot to do it probably moves all around but i think it would be pretty normal to start seeing those fish getting a little bit of color at 55 degrees and once you get up there to 57, 59, like they're, and when, then when you're at 61 and 62, I mean, they're, if they're going to be that one that just gets dark as dark, that like, he's going to be there at 61 or 62 degrees. And it is so pretty. That is about as pretty as it gets. Oh, get I love it. What kind of effects can Asian carp have on a fish um, ecosystem? Yeah, golly, that's a hard question. It, it's uh so they take up a lot of space. They can turn an area into a, they can turn a clear lake. If you had a small reservoir and you put them in there, they could turn it into a pretty muddy place right away or pretty quickly because they've got to wow. find food. But the key thing that they could have a massive effect on is they're eating the same stuff that like the shad and the things that are feeding your sport fish are eating. Now at a very small size, your sport fish can be eating them. So you get that little bit of a trade-off, but they grow fast and they get big fast. And then there's not many predators for them. And they just spawn at such a high capacity that now you've got, it's kind of like the same thing as having zebra mussels. Our big worry about zebra mussels back in the day was, you know, they come in and they're filter feeders and they're just eating all of that phytoplankton and everything that all of our little baby fish need. You know that you're not gonna have a lot of shad if you get rid of all your phytoplankton. In Oklahoma, think, thankfully, almost all of our places were just so productive that they 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 dealt fine with fight with uh, with zebra mussels. But Dustin could probably tell you if he remembers back 2011, 12, 13, somewhere in there when we when Grand Lake got zebra mussels. I think it was 13 when they just really exp had their explosion in that lake. It'll I've never seen it that clear and I've never seen it that clear since there were some coves on, on the East side of the lake, like big hollow area that you could, there were places where there were 10 feet of visibility from the, 
from the yeah. zebra muscle. Yeah, I've and, actually heard all of that with the zebra muscle deal as well, but it was super clear. Yeah, so it's just competition for that primary productivity, and that can really have a big effect on your bait fish, and that certainly would hurt your sport fish. What are some of the factors that would cause a bad spawn in the lake? Well, um, let's talk about at first, like the just the ones that happen anyway. Um, we have these this weird cold front um, that's too yeah. late. We have uh, some fish are just not very smart and um, they're chomping at the bit. Every fisherman in Oklahoma will be out on if it's a weird year and it in the water temperature 61 62 63 degrees they'll be fishing the crappie spawn in february on, on valentine's day because the water temperature is right it's very few crappie that are going to spawn then it's just not smart it's not it's not a stable strategy um the photo periods not there's a lot of things that need to line up and so not many will do it but some of them will well you know there's going to be a cold front after that it's probably going to hammer them um, our biggest thing, though, to cause a bad crappie spawn in Oklahoma, I truly believe this, and it's just because we don't have any natural lakes. Every one of our lakes is a dammed up river. And you've got two things going on. You've got water coming in from a big rain event, and that's going to, especially the photo period's right and the temperature's right, those fish are going to say the habitat is perfect. They're going to get up there and they're going to spawn. And the Corps of Engineers or GRDA has a job of keeping flood control, like risk, de-risking floods. So flood control is their number one priority. So the crappie went up there and spawned and they went up really shallow because their babies are going to be born at the bottom of this bush and they've got the best chance of survival. I mean, this is perfect. The problem is, is the entity, the Corps of Engineers, GRDA, whoever it is, is needing to pull that water down because it's springtime. We're going to get another rain and we can't afford to flood a bunch of people down stream. So now they pull the water off of them. Unstable mm -hmm. water levels, I would say, is the number one in Oklahoma. I don't even think it's close. Factor to a bad spawn. Um, whether th those years that the cold front after cold front after cold front, that makes it tough. But that's also why crappie don't all spawn at the same time. And that's it's yep. a perfect situation. You don't want everything spawning at the same time. You want most of them spawning in a window because there's safety in numbers. And if you're the last one to spawn, your kids are all, they're going to be done. Because, <laughs> yeah, they're getting picked off. If you're the first ones, well, everybody's out there hungry waiting on the first little babies to swim by. And nope, they're, they're up a creek. But <laughs> you hope that you'll get these spread out pockets of fish you know you got a thousands now thousands now thousands now so um but yeah it's unstable water levels that's it, I can that's see that. why we have link limits on uh 10 killer fort gibson um grand lake just because those water levels are so unstable that we can't depend on a good spawn every year wow do y'all have any or do you have any knowledge of really actually how fast can crappie swim another great question <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, no, I'd have to look that up in a thing. They're not incredibly fast swimmers. I'll say that they're, um, they're just gotta not be fast swimmers. They, I mean, what's considered a fast swimmer though? Cause this is such a interesting question. I gotta know, like a t toss something up. If you were to guess 10 to 15 mile per hour, eight. Oh, okay. Eight mile per hour. Nine. Wow, I, way faster the water. I mean, they may, they may be nine or 10, but Cause sometimes yeah, I, you see them dart and it's just, you think, woo, them things can get. Well, and that, well, yeah. Cause there's that too. They're, they're just not long-term swimmers. So you, they can probably dart at some ridiculous speed, but they're not just okay. going to go, I got to take off and swim really fast for yeah. a long okay. period. Like a, a, a tuna, you know, that's just going to yeah. fly <laughs> and keep doing it or a paddlefish that can, yeah get it get moving and probably move pretty quick if it had to but um no they're not very fast the the key to this is they're probably 10 to 15 times faster in the summer than they are in the winter um wow. the winter time they're swimming really slow their metabolism's low um they're just swimming slow summertime they're going to swim the fastest they've ever swam and that's that's why you get down into your neck of the woods brad some of these lakes get really hot in the summer and you can actually have crappie losing weight in the summer they're not growing through the summer because it's 
really hard for them to eat enough to keep the weight on because they're just in a stress situation and that water gets too hot you know up there above 80 85 88 degrees they they're going backwards there for a little bit yeah I could see and that. uh white crappie and black crappie crossbreed yeah yeah they can uh, i've heard people call them gray crappie or something like that um there's no real term for them out there you can call them whatever you want and well let's just ask this answer the second part of that question is that like the key to gigantic crappie um mm -hmm. there's probably some validity there um any hybrid species that i've ever dealt with now black and white crappie are really close species wise so you're not changing as much as you are in some of those other crossbreeds where you're like wow that's a big move you know um, black and white crappie are very very close to each other but anytime you have a hybrid species a hybrid between a hybrid between two species there's just this thing we call hybrid vigor and they just grow fast they grow really fast and um, a lot of times if you're split far enough that your your progeny is going to be sterile well, now they're growing really fast because they're not using near as much as their their resources towards reproductivity. They're they're just putting on weight and growth. Um, but yeah, they certainly can. Um, it's not good for nature for that to happen. So it's not going to happen naturally a lot. If you think about it, it's the it's a dead end for your species to be to be hybridizing purposely. And you've also got a, a difference in the water that black crappie seek out, which typically isn't in the same creek typically they have to go to another creek to find that clear water they want and, and so you got you got to spread out of they may live together all winter mm -hmm. at this point but then they go separate ways and these are spawning at five degrees cooler and these are about five degrees warmer and these are in muddy water and these are in clear water so there's there's biological stop gaps there to keep it from happening naturally but it still probably does a little bit I, I know I, you probably gonna have a sore throat after tonight, but no, I definitely you, I you get down here tonight, saying. Josh. It is definitely uh, uh, very informative for everybody out there watching and listening tonight. So thank you again for coming on here. I've got a few more questions. I see a really good one, Josh Ashley, uh, Joe Ashley, a buddy of mine. Uh, how long does it take for crappie eggs to hatch, and how long will the male stay with the fry? Okay. So we talked about this that, uh, golly, I wish I remember the exact time frame. It's like, um, and I think it's about five days, but it could be as low as, yeah, five to seven days. Let's say five to seven days. But I need to look that up. But it's, uh, so here's the deal. They're terrible parents. A lot of times those males, they're not guarding the nest like you see other i mean they're like in the picture but they may be over here i mean they're just the mom is a really bad parent when it comes to <laughs> crappies they they go up there they spawn if you've noticed if you're wanting to catch females during the crappie spawn you're not catching them empty i mean you're catching them before they're spawn they've spawned because once they spawn they're just i'm gonna go rest go chill out for a little bit and i'm gonna go eat um and the males will hang around every parent's a little bit different some males hang out for longer they may be hanging out for longer because they figured out hey this is pretty easy pickings i can eat some while i'm at it and uh they're just pretty bad parents so it's hard to say it's not like a bass that they're it, bass aren't great parents but it's not like a bass that's going to stay with those fry for a long time these crappie have sixty thousand eggs for a reason and it's so that they do not have to work very hard at at keeping them all alive very very tough question <laughs> well you know like i said you've answered so many questions this is like i said i think the third at least three different podcast shows you've done with me and every time i think i learn a little bit more from you man and like i said a few minutes ago definitely appreciate your time and do me sure. one favor tell me you're going to come back and do this again with us i know i <laughs> have some more questions for you next time yeah, man. I uh, You can ask all the questions you want. I love this every time. I've had such a good time. It's always a good time. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's helpful. Uh, I hate it when I get a question I can't answer. There's been some good, really good ones tonight. The <laughs> yeah. black spec thing, if I've heard that, I don't remember ever even hearing it. I've probably heard it, but um, yeah, of course, I'll come back anytime. I, I love it. So 
That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you very much too. And like he said, I learned something as well. Uh, every time I watch or hear something to do with you. Appreciate Bobby Garland base. Like I said in the beginning for supporting today's bite and coming up with this for Dustin and I, we definitely enjoy it. We learn something every week. Seems like at least I know I do. Um, for sure. So appreciate you, Josh. Till next time. Got Brad Chapel. Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. <laughs> yeah, Josh Dustin. Thanks for having me. You bet, yeah. buddy. I appreciate you. Guys, make sure you hit hit that like, subscribe, and follow button. Until next Tuesday night, 7 p.m. We will see you guys next week. And stay tuned, yeah. Josh. Yeah, you too.